what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. Hello and welcome to Brothers in Tech, our technology discussion show here on TheMesh.TV. This is our show designed for anyone looking to improve their life with technology, and especially those of you that are serving as the, the default go-to tech people in your family or friend circle. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to be a resource for you. And uh, my name is Alan Jackson, and my co-host here is my brother in tech, Brian, how you doing, Brian? Good, Alan. How you doing? Good. Good. Another Good to talk another again. Uh, another topic. Yeah, I'm excited. This yeah. is topic number three for us. Right. That's right. We're, keeping, We're trying to hit a, trying to hit a different topic uh, about every month or so. We kind of dig into something a little deeper, and uh, you know, go into a whole another area. The format of the show, as uh, you may be familiar if you've listened to other episodes, is we kind of have our main episode uh, once a month where. Uh, we kind of introduce a topic and, and go into a good general discussion about that topic. And then we follow it up with some deep dive episodes. So those deep dives are really meant progressively probably getting a little bit deeper on the technology level, both on complexity and uh, hands-on that you may have to have if you're going to implement some of this technology. But here at the main episode, we try to keep it a little higher level. Let's talk over the ideas and concepts and and see if we can help get people on the right path for looking at uh, the topic we're going to cover this month. And that topic yep. is going paperless. So the idea yeah. of converting to a true digital lifestyle as opposed to using physical paper. Um, yep. Brian, I am I think I say this about every topic, but I think they get increasingly more exciting for me to talk about <laughs> because I do love this topic. I mean, this to me yeah. is a, a big yeah. thing for me. I know you also have really made a lot of efforts in your life to go paperless as well. So we're excited mm-hmm. to kind of share some of those thoughts and concepts and strategies for people to do that as well going yeah. forward. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's going to be fun because it is, it is something that we want to do. I think a lot of people want to do it, but I also think there's a lot of frustrations that people will um, encounter if they don't go about it the right way. So hopefully as we talk about some of our, uh, pitfalls that we've kind of encountered along the way. Um, I think maybe it'll keep people from, uh, making those same mistakes. Uh, but there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of great things now to, um, to kind of approach this idea and, uh, and hopefully make some better decisions going forward, not only for the environment, but also for, uh, the clutter of our life. So I think it's going to be good. Yeah. yeah, agreed. And uh, so I thought maybe let's start, Brian, just just give a little background for both of us. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we both are people who kind of dig into technology as it becomes available. We like to look at new technologies that are, that are coming available. So this idea of, hey, we can actually over time move to where we don't have any paper in our day-to-day life or minimize as much as possible is something that I know that you and I both gravitated to pretty quickly. So let's Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about just why someone would go paperless. Because, I mean, you and I may just try to do it because we like technology and we're going to jump in these things a little head first. But why would anybody listen into this? In your mind, Brian, what would be the main reasons they would decide to go paperless? What are the key advantages somebody could get from a paperless life? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, it was, um, I'd, I'd like to say that it was environmental, uh, awareness and sustainability, uh, but I don't think it was. I think uh, initially it was, it was probably more clutter. Well, we're just being um, honest know, you, here, so I think. That's yeah. Fine. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, yeah. The, did you? Did we want to cut this out and kind of re- re-record? That? <laughs> no, no. We can leave it in there. That's fine. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> I'm I'm simply looking at the environment. Um, so for me, it was really a question of decluttering. You know, I've got too much too much clutter in my office, and I realize that I have this paper that I know I made for a reason. And I know I've decided I need to keep it for a reason, but then I look at it and say, why do I have something that takes this much space? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I do, it's funny, I have colleagues, I have a a particular colleague here who swears up and down by her piles and saying, Mm -hmm. this is my way of sorting things. She'll tell you exactly where it is and what pile it is. And that's great. 
And I don't know how easy that is to do for some people in a digital world, unless you're totally comfortable uh, interacting with um, your device. But now that people are getting more and more comfortable with that, I think it's uh, it becomes a much easier transition. So for me, it was declutter. Yeah. And then there was the side benefit of, well, of course, if I can save paper and not have to kill as many trees, that would be a great thing. So. How about you? I'm sure you are much more about the environment first. Yeah, no, and, it's all environment. All, I'm actually right. kind of offended, and uh, Brian, that you <laughs> you know didn't have that as top priority. No, I, and all joking. Yeah, that's a nice side benefit. Okay, I absolutely am looking at that. My thing is, is that I wasn't a terribly major paper producer on my mm. own to begin with, so I don't really feel like, unfortunately, me going paperless has really impacted the environment at all, unfortunately, because everybody else is still producing paper and sending it to me or giving to me, and I want to try to minimize that, but um, most of my paper going paperless was the papers that are coming to me that I wanted to get out of my way and not mm. have to have sitting around me anymore. So um, meetings I went to where they were handing out paper copies of agendas and notes and reports, um, you know, me handwriting some notes in a meeting and just it staying in a notepad, you know, there again, I wasn't producing tons of extra paper. It's just the paper I did have around me. I wanted to have in a better, more convenient format. So for me, the two main things, well, there's actually three reasons, but the two main ones, uh, it's having everything in one place. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. someone where I've got a work office, just like you have a work office at the university, but I also do a lot of work at home. I have a home office as well. And having to keep all the papers and folders and everything with me and lugging from place to place, um, even going to meetings with like folders and all, it just got to be really um, tough to manage where I kept that one folder and do I have to always carry it with me every time I go in a bag. Um, so that was probably the biggest reason. It's just I got tired of lugging all these papers and folders around. I said, well, if I can make this digital, I've got an iPad, I've got a phone, mm -hmm. I've even got my laptop. That's my devices. If I could get them to be available on all those devices, then how great is that? I just take my iPad to a meeting I can not only take notes, but I can also uh, uh, pull up documents Access that maybe others. I've had yeah. from the fast. So I, I feel mm -hmm. like I'm prepared, better prepared yep. for those meetings. The other really kind of functional thing for going digital for me, which I think a lot of people don't realize is a great advantage, is the ability to share anything you turn into a digital format. So if I'm handwriting notes in a meeting and it's on a legal pad in my notepad, to share that with somebody, there's not really a good practical way unless I go digital, okay? Mm -hmm. So right. if I say after a meeting, hey, you know what? I want to share my notes with somebody else. Uh, if I had handwritten those notes, well, then I've got to go through a whole other step of scanning or snapping that that those notes and sending it to somebody. By being digital in the first place, handwriting my notes in a digital format, it really was a click of a button afterwards and say, hey, share that with the colleagues that were in the meeting. And boom, they now have a copy of my notes within a couple of seconds. And it's easy to keep up with. Same thing with scan documents of papers. You know, I can easily share them, scan them, put them up in a file, a Dropbox, whatever I need to do. So the sharing of ca uh, capability to me is huge. I, I love sharing notes with people or sketches I make at meetings and send them off and, and not have to worry about a whole extra step of now I got to go scan this. Now I've got to go send it to somebody. So yeah. that to me is the two big functional things. Mm. But Brian, probably my, my most personal thing for me is paper stresses me out <laughs> mm. <laughs> piles yeah. and stacks of paper yep. and all that. It's a, I mean, it's you you said decluttering, but for me, it's a little more emotional. It's a truly, I see stacks of paper. I feel stressed. I feel more anxious. I feel like I've got more to do. And going digital hasn't made it, hasn't had me, hasn't made me lose, have any less to do. Okay. I've still got just as much to do, but I feel like at least now when I hop in to work on things, read things, I've got them in one place. It's a little better to organize. I can folders and prioritize things and just make my life a little more organized. And it's, it helps with my emotional balance during the work day. So that's, that's kind of my reasons for going going paperless, yeah. like I did. Well, that no, that does make sense. I so just to recap, our top 
our top reason is environmental. Yep, absolutely. Okay, our, top of the top yep, of the list. Our second yep. second reason we've got uh, kind maybe of a big emotional gap, big drop right. down, and then our second reason. And, yeah. Okay, and then mm-hmm. emotional stress, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And uh, decluttering. Yep. And then share capabilities. So yep. there's lots of lots of reasons to um, that this may be a and a more effective way to work and a more effective way to you know to go forward with your life. I think but, so. But. We're going to get into the fact that there are some challenges, right? And there's sure. going to be some things that we have to, to to notice as we go along. I also thought it would be helpful um, to, we are talking, we've got our deep dives that's yeah. going to be coming up. So we're going to have a few deep dives off of this topic. And and if you're okay with it, Alan, I was thinking we could have our deep dives based on kind of which which paperless part of our life we're talking about. Is it the creation of new uh, paperless uh, content? Uh, or digital content, or is it taking things that we have? So you go to that meeting and they give you the handout, being able to find a way to put that into the digital um, digital format as well. Mm-hmm. So I think it would be nice for us to look and dig into some of these um, uh, ways, the, the the software, the the hardware that may help us to create new digital documents and mm-hmm. then also convert other digital or other paper documents to digital. Yes, exactly. Because there are so tons be of, two of our dives. There's tons of services, tons of tools, tons of ways to do the things we're going to talk about in general now. So yep. that's really where those deep dives, like you said, will come into play to give you a little more specifics on hardware or software mm-hmm. options to look at in those two arenas. Um, yeah. But let's just talk in general, Brian, kind of this idea when we say going paperless, I I think you and I kind of identified, you even just listed it out there. It really is in three buckets of Mm -hmm. things that really kind of to us make up the paperless world. It's the, I need to, you know, bring documents in. So people give Mm -hmm. me a sheet of paper. People give me a report, something I have that's a physical, tangible paper that if I don't do something digitally with it, I'm going to have to carry around with me or file it somewhere or organize it. And it takes up space and it's something I've got to find. So that's the one concept is taking those documents and bringing them into your digital environment. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of ways to do it. And again, one of the deep dives we talk about, will go into more specifics, but in general, the, the goal is get that paper into a digital format I'll go and say, I mean, it, it could be as simple as you take your, your mobile phone and snap a photo of it. That may yep. be enough. You know, that may be what you need to just have as a reference. Um, there's some pros and cons with that. You know, you don't have quite the capabilities and all, but that you would with a full a higher end scanning instrument. But, you know, you could do it as simply as that. The goal is just to get that paper format, that paper document into a digital format that you could pull it up on your device and read it and see it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. If you need to actually have it be searchable, if you need it to turn into editable text, like in Microsoft Word or something, there's further tools. We'll talk about in another episode for that. But the the number one goal with that is get the paper and have a process where paper hits your desk, paper hits your mailbox, whatever it may be. You're getting it, scanning it, or taking photos, whatever it may be, and you're getting it into your 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 digital workflow. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so, so that's with kind that, of with that arena. Yeah, with that step, it's it's all about thinking what are the ways that paper is given to me day yeah. to day. You might think about a receipt when you go to um, uh, you go to a store and buy something. Okay, well, how many of you are like me? That receipt goes in your pocket and then gets into the laundry later. And yeah. the last time I see it is the debris that comes out of my dryer. Right? <laughs> right. So it'd be nice if you had a a process in place that says, okay, that when I receive that receipt. Let me figure out my process of getting that digital so that I don't have to worry about that paper anymore and I have that uh, document going from here on. It could be uh, when I go to meetings. And it's so it's funny how uh, department meetings and uh, school meetings, it used to be when you arrived, here was the handout that everybody received mm-hmm. as to what were going on, the agenda, the, the out. Well, now it's, okay, you've already been sent this by your email. And any handout, they actually bring you know, maybe five of them and then say, as you're leaving, get out your phone and take a picture of it if you want. You know, and if you're absolutely somebody who needs to take the hard copy, we have a couple extras. That's great. Um, so we're starting to see that change uh, initially now. But having the process of, I'm given a document by somebody, 
I need to figure out a way quickly to get it into my workflow and into my uh, into my digital storage. So yeah. that's that's one of the first steps we're going to uh, think about, right? Yeah, well, I mean, to me, you said those sources. I mean, there's two sources in my daily life. I, I'm sure you're probably the same, Brian. Two places where I could be given physical documents that I would want to turn digital. Mail that comes in the, the postal mail. I still get some mm-hmm. postal mail things. There's some organizations that just, that's still going to be the, 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 the way they communicate with you is they're going to send you something by postal mail. So when I check the mail, if there's mail that I want to keep or I need to actually acknowledge or use, I typically open it up, scan it, take a photo, whatever tool I've got, and then I can trash it or get rid of it. But at least I know I've got it and I can do a lot more with it there. Mm-hmm. The other one's going to meetings. Meetings where, like you said, they pass out agendas or they have other reports or files. You know, I'm in a couple board meetings nowadays and they always have the printed agendas and documents. So that's kind of my two pinch points where I know paper's coming and I need to have a good process for how I'm going to turn it digital so I can get it out of the way and be a little more flexible with what I do with it online. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Now, the other component, you know, is, is where you are creating something putting mm-hmm. something into a digital format. And most of the time we're talking about, you know, you're, you're writing notes or typing notes. Now, if you're someone that's already using a laptop, you go to a meeting and you type your notes in, okay, well, you're already, you're already there. You already made that jump to paperless on that front. But still, most people go into a meeting or go to a conversation or write down notes, and they are handwriting notes, you know, mm-hmm. on a legal pad, on a notebook, whatever they've got. That's where I've noticed, Brian, and you maybe correct me if you see something different. I feel like there's a little more of a a, a comfort curve that has to be accomplished to get to that step. You know, teaching people or getting in the habit of scanning documents or snapping photos of documents. Once you get in the habit pretty quickly, it's pretty easy to stay on that path. But getting people to think about handwriting their notes and using a notebook software tool or some way of organizing those notes, that's, that's a little harder lift for people. But yeah. I can say firsthand, um, having made the decision about a year and a half ago to do that, um, I wouldn't go back. I mean, I haven't owned a legal pad or a, note, a physical notepad in over a year. And it's because I really co- I'm confident in my note-taking abilities in a digital tablet format. Um, so, you know, that's, that's where I am with it. I think it is a little tougher for some people to, to get in that mindset. But that's probably been my number one biggest uh, paper saving tool is to not be taking legal pads full of notes at meetings I go to for clients or other other projects I'm working on. So yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I will say I'm not quite as sold as you are on okay. this. I'm trying. Right. Um, I've worked towards that and have a tablet that I'll take to meetings and uh, write with a digital uh, digital pen and be able to save that. My pinch point, I think a lot of people are probably going to figure this out too, is that you need you need to realize, so if, if you're someone who goes to meetings and wants to take notes at those meetings, as long as you're not someone that's also having to maybe project something at that meeting uh, oh, yeah, up on true. a screen, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're now going, well, how many devices do I need to have there? And what's the mm-hmm. overkill? And okay, well, now I'm now I'm back to, you know, extending my screen on a laptop and maybe typing, which I do not like as much as I do handwriting something. So I do find myself sometimes falling back. And right now I'm kind of in that in-between stage where I'll take my tablet and it's in a portfolio that probably, that also has a a yellow Uh, pad in the back of it. If I get to a, I'm a tweener, Mm -hmm. I'm a tweener right Mm -hmm. now. And, uh, uh, it, like I said, if I know I'm going and I'm not running the meeting, or if I know that I'm not having to do additional things with the uh, the tablet, I do struggle a little bit with even an iPad, doing multiple things on the iPad mm-hmm. and saying, I'm going to take notes. Okay, now let me click through and try to get to that content. Much yeah. easier if I've got just a pad that I'm making notes and then doing something else. So I think that's getting better. Split screen, uh, all of those uh, sure. options. but. I'm kind of at the tweener now and I am looking around my office and, you know, it used to be I would have stacks of uh, manila full or uh, yellow legal pads Mm -hmm. and they would each be designated to a different topic. Mm -hmm. I have maybe one or two now uh, and they're not getting that much use. So I'm, I'm moving in the right direction, but I would say, think, think about how you want to take those notes. If you're someone who likes to type, that's great. 
but being someone who's in a lot of meetings, um, having people with laptops typing away, sometimes can give the appearance that you're not paying attention as opposed to writing with handwriting. I think those are things you have to kind of get past. You've got to figure out what workflow works for you, but um, yeah. but there are ways. There are well, ways that's true. I, so I didn't realize you were still a tweener, Brian. I, I guess I just assumed you would be in the full... Uh, the full handwriting yeah. uh, mode on the on the digital device, but okay, well, we learned I, something I new have about made our a lot of progress uh, every day. All right, yeah, making some progress. And I also would say that I'm I'm kind of a uh, I'm someone who likes to do lots of different things. When I get to maybe a meeting, I like to okay pull up this website here and be able to have this uh, to re- reference. I have another note that I would took earlier. I like to have lots of things. So to me, still a laptop is the way to go about that because okay. I can have lots of things going, but I really miss the handwriting. And as I miss, as I get the handwriting, once that gets a little cleaner and I get a little more comfortable with it, yeah. um, then that's going to be the way to go. This podcast is sponsored by Jackson Creative, a custom communication agency located in downtown Hickory, North Carolina, specializing in online content creation. To learn more, visit thejacksoncreative.com. Jackson Creative, we tell your story. I was where you were, uh, you know, a while back. <laughs> and I am a, I am a, I have a tablet, I have my laptop, and I have my phone. That is all the devices I have. I don't have a desktop computer anywhere. You know, everything yep. I do is has a mobile capability to it. So I've kind of have to prep myself. Yeah, it's tough when I am running a meeting, running mm-hmm. a presentation. Yeah, I I don't I can't rely on just my my tablet unfortunately because I still want to be taking notes on the tablet. So that's where my laptop is kind of my work device for presentations for giving uh doing PowerPoint. I don't have, I don't think I've ever done a PowerPoint or keynote presentation off my iPad. So I'm mm-hmm. I'm pretty much if I go if I know I'm giving a presentation, that's what my laptop is there for. I'm bringing my laptop and it's all set to go. And then my iPad really is purely content creation, meaning I'm writing notes or if I have to reference something that somebody's talking about, I can pull it up and see it. So, um, it was a tough, so it, was, it was a tough lift to get there. I'll admit the first few months were a little rocky. I had both notepad notes, like kind of over here that I had digital notes over here. Yeah. I'd have a yep. hard time finding where I put the note or where I wrote it. So I, I've gone hundred percent digital now and very, very happy with that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm working that way. It's just, yeah. uh, I think part part of the issue is too, is there's so many different options out there, which we'll talk about later in a deep dive of apps to be able to get that content yeah. in, note-taking apps. And for me, I like to try all of them. And so I find myself bouncing between <laughs> all of these. Tough, and yeah. I think once I settle on something that I feel uh, comfortable and having everything in the same location and the same file system, then I think it'll, it'll work cleaner. But yeah. Well, so, so that's kind we, of step one, right? Well, yeah, step one, one is the creating. I think step yep. two is, you know, taking paper that comes in, what you've already talked about, and kind of getting okay. that scanned in. Yep. There is a kind of a third thing, which, you know, is very similar to the first thing we mentioned, which is scanning documents, but it's going backwards in time. It's looking around you and saying, are there articles, papers, documents, other things that you have that's accumulated space around you that you say, you know what, it'd be better. I'm. It's not a... I'm not talking about doing this like with like, you know any kind of antique photos necessarily or anything that's really valuable or important to you that you want to keep the physical copy of. But if it's just articles, if it's just letters, mm-hmm. if it's just other documents from the past that you say, you know what, I don't need to have this in a physical format anywhere. And it actually might do me better to be in a digital format that I could share and work with or do whatever I would need to do. Then it's going back and looking in kind of your library, your archives. What are some things that I could go back in the process of digitizing? Um, I know this isn't paper, but I mean, it's similar to the idea of what I did several years ago when I said, I want to get physical CDs, like music CDs out of my life. It's like, I don't have a need for them anymore. Mm. Uh, They just take a, yes, a compact disc. They were about, I don't know, six inches wide out. Brian, are you familiar with these? Yeah. Um, Mm. They're still you're around. So, you're so old. You're so old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get into my uh, cassette tape process of digitizing all my old cassette tapes because I did that as mm-hmm. well. And yeah, I've your tracks before that. I've right. digitized mm-hmm. VHS tapes. Oh, don't. Uh, we can get into a whole other topic another day on 
getting old media into your computer. But yeah, it's the same kind of ideas looking around and saying, right. look, this is something that took up an entire shelf in my house. And I think I always thought the CD uh, uh, cases stacked together was just also kind of denoted a lot of clutter. It just was a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of room I didn't need it for. Plus the idea of when am I ever actually going to go and grab that CD and play it when I can pull up any music on my streaming mu- music service nowadays. So right. I went through and I digitized every single physical CD because I wanted it to all be digital online and I wanted to save the space and clutter. So it's looking around you and saying, are there magazine articles? Are there letters? Are there files that just take a, take some time, do it in, in phases and just snap it, scan it, whatever you need to do mm-hmm. and uh, organize it on your computer into folders or however you need to do files. Um, that's a time consuming process because that's not right. just processing yeah, things that, as they're coming in. That is going backwards in time and finding things to do this for. So, uh, that uh, seriously is making me sweat right now thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am, I am getting nervous. I'm getting nervous, but so uh, me watching excited you on the camera can... here and you're getting all red. That's not the I camera's really, adjustment. That's no, actually you. No, okay? that's, yeah, that's me. That's me. I mean, I, as, as much as I want that, I yeah. want the end product. Right, the process is what makes me nervous, yeah. and and I think and I think also that may speak to us a little bit about some of the the current steps involved in getting that digital uh, content or created that that content. So snapping snapping a picture with the phone is I think easy for one document. When you're starting to say this document has you know ten pages mm-hmm. and I need to take pictures, yeah. there's plenty of scanning documents. We'll talk about some later in our. Uh, in our bits, but yeah. you know, if this is almost where I would say I may call a service yeah. and have them, I deliver sure. them a bunch of documents, you know, a thousand documents and say, scan them, organize them this way, get them back to me. And here's some money. Um, there may be a, a reason to do that. Well, I tell you, so photographs is probably the best place to think about mm-hmm. a service to do. If you've got thousands of photos, you know, right. laying around. Yeah. That's, that's, enormous lift to go and say, I want to take all those photographs and get them into digital formats. I think it's a great idea. And it's something that's one aspect I have not done in my life. Okay. I, yeah. I, I'm very happy that my movies, my files, my documents and my music are all in digital. I can get to them. They're accessible everywhere I go. Photos though, I will admit I've got boxes and boxes of photos that I just, yeah. I can't stomach the time to do that. So there are services, like you said, where you can honestly, I think they even the way they say it is, whatever you can fit in this size box <laughs> is yeah. going to cost this we'll much for it. us to scan it into digital format. Yeah. Um, I've really contemplated doing that with my photo collection mm-hmm. just to, to do that. And then, but then I get to the issue of, okay, well, when the photos come back, I need to organize it and date them and right. organize the dates and years on them. And that's, that's another lift as well. So mm-hmm. anyway. I, I realize that of the three reasons or three aspects of going di- uh, paperless, this one's probably the biggest time consuming function. But if you've got that desire to go paperless and you really want to minimize the paper clutter or physical clutter around you, it's a worthwhile exercise. You know, my CD collection, it did take me a few weekends, just a couple mm-hmm. hours here, a couple hours there yep. to do that uh, because it took them maybe about four or five minutes per CD to like rip it into my computer for it to be there. And I had hundreds of CDs, so it took a while, but yeah. it was a great feeling. I donated all those CDs to one of my nieces and uh, our nephews and feel good about it. And they loved having that collection. So they yeah. love ragging me about the music that was in my collection. So I still get ragged <laughs> about it to this day. Nice. Um, so well, Brian, Alan, can I of, just say really quickly, yeah, yeah, sure. uh, just on the, on the photo piece, I just want to, and I throw it out there to folks that if you are going to do that with photos, you need to think about why I'm doing this. So I have, you know, if we have photographs, am I doing this so that just in case that first photo goes away that I can print this other one? Mm-hmm. Or are you doing it so that you can share it with people just to have a laugh? Um, if you're, if you're actually wanting a really good quality backup that could actually be reprinted, do go to a service or at least think through your process of doing it. Because I know you have been in this situation. People will send you um, a photo and you can tell 
that was, <laughs> I can see your reflection in there of you yeah. standing over this photo and taking it. So maybe it was a glossy photo. Yeah. Or so it was go to, go to really, li- really low quality format where it's just uh, incredibly looks poor. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can't print it. You can't do anything with it. And that was really not the purpose of yeah. going through the process. So uh, there's some services that are really good about doing it. And also one of the things I may talk about one of our deep dives is do kind of a, a homemade setup light box sort of thing that you mm-hmm. know you can you can actually create a really good uh, uh, digital backup of it. So I actually anyway. think photo kind of photo digital photo management and all that is going to be a great future topic for us. I'd love yeah, to get a little more in that. depth at that. But as great. we're talking about this idea of going paperless, just just that's another form of paper around you. You can really think about with this. Yeah. So so Brian, we've talked about the three kind of processes involved, I guess, in going going mm-hmm. paperless. And we've talked about a great number of advantages and benefits, you know, that you can get from this. But there are some potential pitfalls, right? Yeah. I mean, there are some yep. potential pitfalls and some considerations you really need to think about before you make this move. So what what would you tell somebody is kind of your your biggest concern or con that could come about from trying to go paperless? Well, I'll give an example. So as a teacher, mm-hmm. paper has been a major part of everything that I've done for the last 20 years. You're used to having them turn in a paper, grading a paper, turning back a paper, uh, having an exam come in. So there's a hard copy of that that we can get back to in the future. Um, when I started going paperless with them submitting digital files, what I started noticing is the major con that I didn't see coming was that I would forget a lot of times to give the files back. So whereas in class, I would have my stack of papers. And when I went to class, the stack was there reminding me, oh yeah, I need to give this back to you. When I don't have that stack of papers anymore, there wasn't the constant reminder that, hey, I need to give these back. Now you might be asking, well, don't you have services? We do. We have um, different online uh, services now, Moodle, where I can have them submit via Moodle and then also, you know, send it back to them right away. But um, having that reminder, and I think a lot of people that like their stacks or like saying, hey, I just got this in the mail, I'm going to set it on the counter, mm-hmm. and that's going to remind me when I see it next time to pay that bill. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes going digital, you you have to supplement those reminders by adding your own digital reminder to say, you know, notify me, you know, Alexa, notify me tomorrow that I need to pay that bill as opposed to expecting to see it and have a pile that's there that kind of reminds you, hey, it's the weekend, I'm dealing with this pile. So I think that's one of the downsides is you have to kind of recognize that your current workflow, uh, there may be pieces that that are gone that you're going to have to to augment and supplement with other things. So it's almost like you're saying that if you decide to go paperless digital, you, you kind of need to be prepared to go all the way. Because again, if your physical stacks were your physical reminders, reminders. Mm-hmm. you go digital, you've got to also then add some digital reminder elements to right. prompt you. Right. So you're right. Yep. Um, yep. There is a little bit of, <laughs> I'll give a funny example on that, that con, Brian. So I, um, I use a little tool on my, on my Mac laptop and uh, it's called a, a one switch or something. It's a little menu bar thing where sometimes if I'm going into a presentation or a meeting, I can tell it to turn off my desktop items. Which is nice because, you know, if I'm mm-hmm. showing something on a screen, I don't want it to go to my desktop and it's got all my files all scattered across it. Um, and it was great. I had to turn off the, the the desktop files when I was at a presentation. And I've kind of never gone to turn it back on again. And <laughs> it's one of those where it's like out of sight, out of mind. By, by having this clean desktop with no files, I kind of don't feel like I have anything that's really I need to work on right now because that's normally yeah. where I would put yep. my I got to deal with these things right now files. So it is out of sight, out of mind, but that's the problem is that that's, that's not what you should be doing. I that's should right. be, that's um, right. I have to now go and remind myself to go get them again. So same idea. Um, going yep. digital, there is a little more of a tendency that it's stored in a folder somewhere. I don't have to think about that anymore. But if there is a to-do item, a reminder off of that, that is now an extra task you have to add to yourself. As, yeah. as, as opposed to just having it on your desk and say, everything on my desk is my to-do list. Well, now your to-do list is on the computer, but you've got to manage it. So, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. I mean, uh, simpler with even email, going digital to digital, but trying to get it out of your inbox, put it to the side, work with it later. Well, the inbox is there visually all the time and reminding you. So you, yeah. you always have to think through, why do I 
what's the benefit of having that visual thing in my hand, in my pocket that will remind me, oh, I need to do something with this. You got to supplement that. So uh, I think that's one piece. The other piece I would say is, uh, is, is organization Mm -hmm. is just, you know, to me, people are very, it's very easy to organize things physically and say, oh, well, well, this, this goes in this stack, this goes in this stack, this goes in this folder, Mm -hmm. this one goes in this folder. And I think for people making the leap to digital, you really need to think through your organizational structure in advance to say, all right, am I going to make these digital folders and subfolders and subfolders to subfolders? And how am I going to organize it? Because I think one of the more frustrating things is to put things in what you think is your structure. And then a couple months down the road go, oh gosh, I really should have separated it this way. And now you're having to go through and dig through and try to figure out where things are. So I think thinking through your organizational structure is really important. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I am someone I enjoy organizing on a computer, on a file system. So I feel like I'm good at that. And what always used to get me frustrated on paper was taking a note, something I wrote in notes or papers I was given and having to figure out how I set up a new paper folder to put them in and organize them or where I stack them. So I love the digital organization. But you're right, it is tough for others that may not be their natural way of organizing. So you are, yep. otherwise you've just got a folder on your desktop that's just everything you've ever scanned or every note you've right. ever taken. And then you're right. kind of back to the idea of can you still find it and can you still work with it if it's not yep. organized. So yeah, you're yep. right. Good stuff there. And I will say most of, most of the apps are really good at helping you a little bit a and that bit. They'll, they'll title the file in sure. a way that will let you search it. Uh, I'm just thinking to myself, and I haven't done this yet, but you know, if I wanted to start scanning every receipt that I receive and make it super easy. Someone gives me a receipt at a restaurant or even tells me, do you want a receipt? And I can take a picture of their little terminal or something so that I don't have to have that physical paper anymore. I'm just thinking if I have several of those a day, several of those a week, and at the end of the week, how do I go back and search for the one that I want? And I don't want to have to go and look through every icon. So Mm -hmm. some of that, they get organized by day that they were, you know, stored by minute that they, they happened. Um, there might even be some ways to do batch renaming to say all of these things get renamed in this order. So well, just and think I, through, I, think through your system. Right? I, and I think that's a, I think we're going to do a third deep dive. So mm. probably a little bit further out and it's going to be our most kind of in depth, deep, but deep, or yeah. as far as a complex, but there are ways to kind of set up some workflows where, I use this type of tool to scan these and it automatically puts them in a certain place for me and I can organize between the different types a little better. Yeah. So, yeah, but it is a con. It is something Good. that people need to remember as a, as a possible trade-off you've got with going digital. For me, Brian, and you kind of already alluded to it early on in your conversation when you were kind of saying you're kind of in between processes, I actually think that's a danger too is that, you know, if you are not ready to go full digital on your note taking and scanning of documents, then you've got a hybrid. And that means you've got some things you've written in digital handwriting, some things you've scanned, some things that are on your desk, some things that are in your notepad that can actually become a challenge where you've got different vehicles out there. And now you're having spending more time just trying to figure out where you put something than actually using it. The other thing is is syncing between devices. If you don't have your yeah. devices, uh, your phone, your computer, and if you have a tablet, if they're not using some sort of sharing syncing service, then what you could be facing is, well, I scanned a document on my phone. I scanned a different document on my tablet. I wrote notes on my tablet. I also typed some notes on my computer. But if they're in three different places and they're not connected together, then you're kind of dealing with the same issue where just where do I find everything? Where do I find it? And you're going to get, it's going to be frustrating. It's going to kind of put yep. you off the idea of going digital. So you've got to kind of have this mapped out a little bit before you jump into it. I feel like, um, yep. That's yep. the biggest I think storage, yeah. figure out where you store and how every, every device can be storing to the same place and That's access right. the same thing. Yeah. So, because it doesn't make any yeah. sense to do this. Just if you can't access it, the main benefit is that you can access it anywhere with that's any right. device, and so that you have to think through that. That's that's kind of I'll just kind of tease a little bit, kind of what my situation is. Is that I do use the Apple iCloud service. Um, I did pay. I think we talked about in a previous episode. I did pay for a larger storage plan, so I am paying for mm-hmm. a family plan that's pretty big. It's about six dollars a month, and I mean that's 
I'd rather not be spending $6 a month on just shared storage, but for everything we use it for, it actually kind of makes sense. But the biggest benefit I get out of it is I do have it syncing everything in my documents folder and everything in my desktop mm-hmm. to the cloud. Now, yep. that may be a little overkill uh, because I already do a whole other backup of my computer other places. But what the documents and desktop do by having it share those or sync those means that I can be on my iPad at a meeting and if someone needs to pull up and ask me about a document or something in it from a previous meeting, they're all in there. And that's a huge benefit to going paperless. If you don't have that kind of syncing service available or don't have any way to sync between devices, it could be a world of hurt <laughs> you get into. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because then you spend more time, again, just trying to find out where you put something. Uh, it's, it's just like paper, you know, just like a paper trail. It's like, where did I put that document? Where did I put that paper? You could be facing the same issue on a digital domain if you don't have your devices all kind of connected together yep. that you may use yep. for this kind of note taking or, or document scanning. Um, the last con I'm, I've got, Brian, as far as uh, negative, I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and say I think there's a lot more positives than negatives to go paperless. But the one other con I will say is... When you take something from a paper format to digital, part of the reason we want to do that is to get rid of the paper format, to shred it, to trash it, to recycle it, whatever we're going to do, so it's out of our hair. But once you've done that, that digital version is now the only version that exists of that. I personally have more confidence that the digital version will be safe, okay, because I do backups of my computer. I store a lot of things on the cloud. But I'd hate to think that that one priceless photo or one priceless document that I scanned and I said, you know what, I can now get rid of that document and throw it away or whatever. And if something were to happen, computer crash and I didn't have a backup or I wasn't syncing things anywhere to the cloud. I mean, it's gone. It's physically physically and digitally gone. So again, keep in mind, I think... I'm I'm sweating again, by the way, if you can't <laughs> recognize. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I'm thinking. Yeah. Can I'm not recommending you yeah. go out and take your, your family heirlooms that are papers or photos and scan them and throw them away um, because of that. But I do think, you know, you have to make some judgment calls on how safe you feel with the idea of not having a physical copy anymore. Yeah. So it's becoming but less and less you know, an that, issue that, you know, every I year. Was gonna that, say that, along, that, also can, that also can work. I mean, you can work through that by not just I have a process of saving it to my device, but I then have a backup that comes and grabs that and backs it up to a different place. So that particular process, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a deep dive of, all right, so I saved it. It's now part of my documentation, my document, um, my online uh, document structure. But then I have another place that it gets a redundant backup. I think yeah. that's one of the things that can be very easily done and done for very little money. You can do a very high-end version of that, or you can do uh, potentially a, a very inexpensive uh, version of that, depending on how comfortable yeah. you are with some services. So, But yeah. I would say, you know, if, you, if you're listening to this and you've considered trying to jump into a more digital workflow without paper, uh, there are some considerations, just like we, we've yep. kind of shared already. It's uh, knowing that you kind of have to go all in to some degree to avoid confusion to avoid uh, complications with different notes or documents in different places. You got to get past the learning curve and comfort level of taking notes in meetings or places you go on a tablet or another device that you can write with. Um, You need to make sure stuff's synced. Otherwise you're going to have one, two or three different variations of where you store your documents and files. And that's, that's not always very good. So yeah, um, there's just a lot. And then like there is a little bit more of that workflow of, all right, well, if, the, if my papers were serving as my to-do notes or my reminders of what to do, if you don't have those, you've got to have something to replace that in the digital field. And that could be seen as extra steps. I feel like I've made it to where that is now a quicker process for me to make a to-do note and have it pop up at yeah. a certain date. Yeah. And here's the file attached to it. Then having it sit on my desk and trying to remember what I'm supposed to do with it. Right. But it took me some time to get to that and to feel comfortable with that. Um, so, yeah, so there's some, there's some, there's some pros and cons mm-hmm. with it. But again, I'm a big believer in a digital format for things that lend themselves to be digital. You know, I yep. still like to listen to LP albums, you know, physical albums, cause I just mm-hmm. like the style of it. Um, 
I still kind of prefer to watch like Blu-ray movies instead of digital movies because I just feel like it's probably a, a little better quality. So there are still th- in photographs. I still like having physical photographs. Magazines, I still like having physical magazines with nice photos. But anything else, I'm ready for it to go digital. It's just I'm ready for it to be on my tablet, on my computer, on my Apple TV, whatever I need it to be. And uh, um, I'm, 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 I feel like I'm happier <laughs> since yeah. that, if I can yeah. say that. So, yeah. Well, Alan, let me, so I was just thinking as you're talking through, I guess there is one more con that I would bring up, or actually, uh, we'll say roadblock that you have to realize is this is really easy to do if you were the only person that lives in your household. Sure. Right? If you say, I'm going digital, and then everything is where I need it to be and where I want it to be. Mm -hmm. If you've got other people in your household and having a mixed household of people that like to write notes and people that don't like to write notes, then it becomes a challenge. Um, becomes a challenge because someone who likes that stack doesn't necessarily want to then go and dig in their phone to find something. Again, I, one of the well, last, uh, I think at that point you just need to get a different family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm saying, you know, I'm just, there are some, some things that have to be kind of, uh, you know, practiced by everyone in the household. And if you're not on board, it might be time to find a new family. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm making a note that we're cutting that out. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's going to get me in trouble and, uh, and oh, no, no. I'll tell yeah, you, maybe so not you, but <laughs> I, um, it took some forcing, Brian, but you're right. You know, I'm, I, I don't yeah. mean to discredit. That is a valid com- concern. Yes. Uh, if you've got somebody in your household that is used to having, likes having the papers, likes having the stacks, likes having the to-do reminders that way. Um, I moved my family kind of aggressively a few months ago for our grocery list. Here's just a great example. Bur- burned list, burned okay? all the paper in the house. And we did. <laughs> just had a big paper burning it. out in the front yard. I was like, that's it. If I see another sheet of paper come in this house, you're out. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, the grocery list. You know, we had little notepads and little yep. post-it notes yep. and just writing what we need in the grocery list. So I set up a shared list on Apple uh, Reminders and said, okay, guys, this is it. We're all sharing this list. Everybody can access it. Everybody can put stuff on there, and this is what we're using. And it took about two months to get to the point where we were all kind of comfortable doing it. But yeah. now I think it's pretty invaluable. Uh, you know, if, if Suzanne goes to the grocery store, she can pull up the list and say, oh, look, Alan needs deodorant. And, oh, look, Alan even took a photo of his current deodorant that's out, so I know exactly what type he likes. And it took some some movement, but we got there. And you know, now we're not yeah. using paper slips or things like that anymore. And, um, even the kids can, you know, hop on there and add something, Hey, we need more snacks in the house or whatever. So, um, it's good. It's good, but it is taking people to get to move there. You're right. Well, and and you'll remember one of my, my bits from a previous episode was about, uh, any list, which was a Mm -hmm. grocery. And, and I have to tell you, this kind of brought a tear to my, I think, I think, Laura, my wife, listened to that episode uh, mm. because up to that point, I have tried so many times to move to a digital grocery list. Yeah. And it's usually been, okay, yeah, that sounds great. And then I see she still has her mm-hmm. notepad that she takes. And it, that was what's comfortable. It was comfortable in, in the store to be able to do that. I think it was just last week that she we, t- we were talking about something. She said, oh, we need this. She said, can you put that on any list? And I said, Ooh. oh my gosh. And a tear came, trickled down mm. my face that it was like, you're just like, I love oh, you. Yes, honey. honey. <laughs> yes, yes, I can do that. Um, so <laughs> that was fantastic. And then I said, well, honey, can't you do that? Just tell Alexa to do that. And then she's like, oh, that's right. And she told Alexa, I was like, oh, brothers in tech is working. You got, it is man. working. It's changing the we're, world, Alan. You're changing, changing lives left and right. One person at a time. One person at a time. And it's just, it's just great. So, if, if all we did, Brian, stuff. in this whole show, this whole several weeks we've been doing this or whatever, if we that was our one accomplishment, I I feel like it was a victory. I feel like I it was think, good. I think we we have won. We yeah, have yeah. won. We have won yeah. the brothers in tech battle. So. <laughs> Well, Brian, yeah. in our deep dives, we're going to go into a little more detail. So uh, what I'm yep. going to say to everybody here is if you've heard this topic us talking about, it, you say, you know what? Yes, that's what I want to do. I, I'm ready to go. Okay, well, then I encourage you to listen to the next couple deep dives because first one we do is going to be all about uh, talking about the handwriting tools and hardware. Like I want to start writing notes and using that for uh, to go digital. We're going to walk you through some, some ideas and uh, different devices and tools for that. Second one we'll do is about the whole scanning. So I got paper and I want to get that paper into my device. What kind of scanner should I use? What are my options? We're going to walk through that in the second deep dive. And then we'll do a third one on 
those more workflows like that I talked about. How do you organize and kind of automate these things a little bit more so when you do snap receipts, they go into a place where you can find just receipts very easy and search and, and find what you're looking for. So that's going to be our three deep dives we're going to get into. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to doing that. But Brian, with every episode we do, we always have like our end little bit. And we call it our bits. It's our brothers yep. in tech suggestions. I still think that's incredibly clever. That. I can't believe you I came up that. with that. It was so good. Well, uh, I, again, I, I think I'm, I've won many times with this so far. <laughs> this has been awesome. Yeah. I, Even if we're uh, the I, I think we may need to stop to now. We may, may stop well over ahead. <laughs> what I'm saying. Well, we do have a, a bits for this episode. We're trying to do that with yep. every episode. Give you a suggestion of something kind of related to the topic in some way, shape, or form. So, Brian... Yep. Uh, you got a bits for us you want to share? You know, I, I have a, I have several, but I think I'm going to spread them out across our uh, our deep dives. Okay. Uh, as we've talked, I've kind of changed my mind about what I was going to use. And I think I'm going to uh, suggest that the bit be take a look at Google Drive mm -hmm. if you have not done so already. If you're not in the Google ecosystem, uh, because Google Drive, which is basically their online storage file service, um, that can be a great way, inexpensive in that it's free. Anybody with a Google account has access to Google Drive. Um, that's going to be a way where pretty much any document service that you use, that then some of the things we'll talk about later, will often say, where do you want to store this? And mm -hmm. Google Drive can be a way of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a, there's a downside. It's Google. And if yeah. you're a little concerned about things like receipts or actual um, home uh, bills and documents that are really important that you are worried about them being scanned and seen by others and all of that maybe you uh, you might have to kind of get uh, past that or look for another service that you're paying for but i use google drive a lot now and i've started to make that the initial place where anything that i take digital gets stored so that uh one i don't have to pay for it uh mm -hmm. and two it's uh it's easily searchable with any device. And uh, so I think Google Drive is something to check out. Of yeah. course, there's document creators and all of that that go into it. We've talked about Google several times already. You mentioned iCloud. So I actually don't pay for iCloud, mm -hmm. um, but I use the desktop and the documents sync because they give you five gigabytes free. Five gigabytes. If that's enough, yeah. then that's good. Well, yeah. so here's my thing. So I, and just a quick tip, this is another bit, mm -hmm. is I, I don't store anything in my documents folder anymore. I took everything out of my documents and put it in a new folder called stuff <laughs> and stuff doesn't get backed up uh, stuff, because everything in my very, document, yeah, documents was Brian. way too much. Yeah. yeah. So what it is is I just use my desktop. My desktop is my workplace. Hmm. So if I'm working on it and I need to have access to it in the next day or so, it goes on my desktop when I'm ready and when I'm done with it, then it goes into Google drive or whatever uh, the online okay. service I'm using. Yeah. So anyway, uh, look into Google Drive if you haven't. Uh, so don't be afraid and say, I do not want to pay for services and I can't store anything anywhere and I don't have a server at home. Google Drive can do it for you. Yeah. So, no, yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer in Google Drive. I know we're going to explore some of the online services like Dropbox and Google Drive and all that at some point down the road. But I mean, I'll go yep. ahead and say and echo what you're saying. Um, Google Drive is pretty ubiquitous in that you're right. There's a lot of these services that will let you do scanning, or note taking and saving it or directly to a Google Drive account, which means yep. not only is it saved on the cloud, it's basically backed up at that point. And you can share it so easy by just clicking some buttons and inviting other people to share documents. So it becomes a great collaboration tool. So if you're taking notes and you want to immediately have those two, those notes available for collaboration, Google Drive is a great way to do yep. that. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. That's good. So my my bit, Brian, is a little different in that I, I took this concept of going paperless and I took it one step further. One other aspect of my life where I used paper was sketching or drawing. Um, part of my my life, my career is is around visuals and what things look like and how things appear. So I'm always doodling, I'm always sketching, I'm always sketching out logos, I'm sketching out words and phrases and uh, putting some visual highlights to everything I do. And I was doing that on paper for the longest time on a notepad. I got in the habit after a meeting, I would snap a photo of it with my phone and say, okay, at least I got a digital format of it now. But it got to a point those papers were still papers. I mean, it's still these sketches I was taking or doodles or uh, other things. So I spent a lot of time really researching different drawing apps for my tablet to say, 
I want to be able to draw really, really well on a app, uh, go anywhere from pretty simple sketches and logos or diagrams up to very, very complex sketches. And I want to be able to save it, share it, easily access it. So Autodesk Sketchbook is the one app I'm using for sketching. Uh, it's not the app I use for note-taking. We'll explore that later. But it's the one I want to use for, I want to sit down and draw something out. I want to sketch something. I want to visualize something on there. And then I want to immediately share it with coworkers, with clients, or whatever it may be. And I can do that pretty easily. So Autodesk, there's a lot of there's a lot of drawing apps out there. There's a lot of sketching apps. But to me, Sketchbook is the one I've found to be the most intuitive for me and the most full-featured with different tools, different type of brushes and pencils and whatnot. So now I don't sketch on paper, like physical paper anymore. Everything I sketch when I'm looking at ideas, I'm thinking through things, I will sketch in uh, Sketchbook now. And I keep a notebook in that app of all my different sketches. I can flip through them. I can view them. I can go and search for them by time. And uh, it's great. So I really, Mm -hmm. that's kind of become my default sketching app. And again, going paperless, that was another component of my life is I didn't want to be carrying around tons of paper every time I sketch something out. And uh, yeah. this has really helped. So, so Alan, I see that's a, that's a free app, right? There's a free, there's a free the version and there's a paid version just like most other yeah. apps. But yeah, a sketchbook yeah. for the version I use free. I don't pay for anything okay. higher. And, and do you get it on multiple devices or is that the part that makes it? Um, I don't money? think it's on the phone because honestly, it's 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 got a lot more tool palettes and everything like that. I don't believe it's on yeah. the phone. I could be wrong, but I okay. don't have it on my phone if it was there. Okay. Um, I do believe there's a Mac version of it though. Yeah. Um, it does look like actually now that they're, it does it have a phone on version all devices? Too? Yeah. It says it works okay, on all good. devices. Yeah. All right. Well, so, that's, that's awesome. fairly new. I don't think there was a phone version or, or one really available when I was started using it, but, uh, it is, uh, it is available on others. I don't know how it would be to work on a phone. It's a, it's got a lot of options, which I love, a lot of tools to choose from, a lot of features on it. I don't know how I could possibly pull that off on a phone, but uh, maybe it is capable. So, yeah. yeah. So that's our oh. bits for the, for the episode here. So Brian's recommending Google Drive is a great tool as you decide to go paperless for storing, sharing, and collaborating on those paperless documents. And I'm recommending Autodesk Sketchbook, definitely for the iPad or other tablet, but you could also look at using it on a desktop computer or a phone as well. So Brian, after this topic, again, we've got some deep dive episodes coming up over the next several weeks where we're going to go a little more, uh, a little deeper, a little bit more uh, specific about the the topics we were talking about today. So again, that'll be uh, looking at uh, handwriting tools and devices Mm -hmm. and note taking tools then we're going to go into scanning documents or scanning tools, ways to yep. scan your papers in. Then we're going to look at a workflow, kind of ideal workflow of ways you could organize your documents and get them kind of uh, handled the way you want to after you've taken care of getting them digitally. So Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, sounds, sounds great. like a lot of good stuff to cover here over the next several weeks. So, But Brian, if somebody does have, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> if somebody does want to reach out to us and talk to us or ask us a question or even give us ideas for future topics, what what should they do? Well, I think they should call your cell phone. Yeah, which go is, ahead and give uh, that out, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, they should, uh, they should email the info at themesh.tv email address. Info at themesh.tv. Uh, and I think that's, uh, we're going to be checking that often to try to make sure you note that it is for Brothers in Tech and that you're having some suggestions or questions yeah. or ideas. Uh, we would love to to hear from you and uh, figure out what uh, what you guys want us to talk about. I think it would be great. So. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. So, yeah, and we do recommend you also to checking out The Mesh Network. That's our mm-hmm. podcast network that we're a part of, themesh.tv, T-H-E-M-E-S-H.tv. It's where you can go to not only subscribe to the show if you're just listening to it maybe on a website right now. You can actually subscribe to the show through Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, uh, Radio Public. Gosh, the list goes on. There's a lot of different places where you can find the show and subscribe to it. And plus, you can also check out other shows on the Mesh Network. There's some other great shows. I might want to just throw out a quick recommendation. There's a show, if you're listening to this show about technology, 
maybe you've got a little bit of an entrepreneur spirit. Maybe you've got some ideas or you have your own business. Uh, we have a show on the Mesh Network called Entrepreneur Exchange, where it is some some fellows here in our area that are experts in entrepreneurship. They actually run a small business center here with a local college. And they actually host a show where every month they get together and talk about a different topic on entrepreneurship and starting your own business. And sometimes they do dip into the area of the technology you would need to help start a business. So just a nice little connection point there to make Entrepreneur Exchange on the Mesh.tv, a great show we recommend checking out as well. After you subscribe to this one, of course. That's, of course. That's of your course. first goal. Mm-hmm. So. Yep, yep. All right, Brian, well, we're going to go ahead and close it out for today, but we will look forward to talking with everybody in the coming weeks as we get a little deeper into this topic of going paperless. Brian, as how always, we, thanks. It's good talking to you, man. How did we do? Did we do you actually keep this under an hour? I think we did. Oh, my gosh. That's we are winning so much little. right now. You know, this is awesome. <laughs> Well, this, it this just, show is it just, just keeps getting better. Left and right. <laughs> it just um, keeps getting better. <laughs> I think we did uh, it. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, man. We will look All forward right. to talking to everybody next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. What you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is the mesh.